New at five, a case takes a chilling turn. A man now accused of killing his wife by poisoning her food with heroin. In 2014, Christina Harris, a devoted mother of two little girls, went to sleep and never woke up, mysteriously dying from what family were led to believe and the Davidson police thought was an accidental overdose. Shocking new evidence from an unheard of witness it's as if Christine is speaking from the grave to ensure justice is done. What did that witness have to say? That it was her husband, Jason Harris, who killed her in cold premeditated murder, which he is now charged for. It was, it was all really surreal. Davidson Mayor Tim Bishop remembers a chaotic scene over five years ago when the married mother of two, Christina Harris was found dead in this home in the same neighborhood that he lives just a few months after giving birth to her and her husband's second daughter. A really hard moment. It's, it's tough to see. Um, and then, you know, the story started trickling in and the different things and it all kind of Mayor Bishop says that he now has clarity after learning what the investigation has led to. Genesee prosecutor David Latham said that Christina Harris's husband, Jason Harris, has a history of cheating and seeing other women outside of the marriage. Harris even admitted to his friends and co-workers that he wanted his wife gone. The prosecution even alleges that he hired a hitman to take his wife out. Jason Harris had paid $5,000 to a guy to kill Christina. And while this particular alleged hitman was doing surveillance on her, the hitman was caught by police with a firearm. The alleged hitman, who was a felon out on parole, was violated and sent back to prison. That's when investigators allege that Harris took matters into his own hands. But two long years after the medical examiner and coroner ruled her death an accidental overdose by opiate, a shocking piece of evidence was found at her mother and father's house that would reveal the truth. Police were able to secure three plastic packages of Christina Harris's frozen breast milk that were placed in a cooler. All three of those were submitted to the Michigan State Police Crime Lab. In each instance, no controlled substance was detected. We believe Jason Harris murdered his wife. We believe he put heroin into her cereal and milk the night that she died. Lathan alleges that after years of working the case and the final pieces coming together, they finally had enough to arrest the husband. Her family thanks the police for never giving up. It's just a relief to know that, you know, um, there's justice being served and the, the, the community can count on its police and, and the state police to do their job and they have done it. You went to bed that night, you were concerned that anything was wrong? Nope. This local father charged with murdering his wife by spiking her cereal with heroin. Now, for the first time, hear what Jason Harris says under oath about the hours leading up to his wife's death. 44-year-old Jason Harris will have his day in court tomorrow at his preliminary hearing to defend the charges of murdering his wife, Christy Thompson Harris. We get to hear from the husband, Jason Harris, while under oath that took place during a deposition while being sued for the wrongful death civil lawsuit filed by his wife's family. Back in September 2014, inside this Davidson home, where 36-year-old Christy Thompson Harris would be found dead in the master bedroom. Her death would initially be ruled an accidental overdose. We believe he put heroin into her cereal and milk the night that she died. Christy's husband Jason was charged in her murder, but before being charged, Christy's family filed a wrongful death lawsuit so that he would be deposed under oath. They would find out that he had relations with another woman and admitted being in contact with yet another woman during his marriage to Christy. You sent sexual messages to her? Yes. And you disclosed this at some point to your wife? Yes. When did you disclose it to Christy? As soon as she asked about him. When she asked what the number was and I told her. He also admitted what he said in regards to his divorce from Christy. I think it came up as 
an option for the whole theory of living in a perfect world. This is what he had to say in regards to the money problems during his marriage. What was the reason for filing bankruptcy? Because we were well over our head. Then he was asked about hiring a hitman to kill his wife. Did you ever request that Mr. Shustak um, kill your wife? No. And if he said that you did, he's either lying or mistaken? No, he'd be lying. The 44-year-old father also spoke about what happened that night inside his home while his two children slept the night before his wife died. When you went to bed that night, you weren't concerned that anything was wrong? Nope. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Other than her falling asleep when pumping, she got hungry and made her up a bowl of cereal. That's what she asked for. Harris left home early the next morning. And when you left, she was alive? Correct. A neighbor then found, neighbor his, found wife his wife dead, dead in her bed bedroom after, being after asked Jason to check called on that neighbor asking husband. her to check on Christy. It was soon after that, that time, her death was Christy's ruled death was ruled an overdose. accidental overdose. You had nothing to do with your wife's death, right? Correct. Harris then admitted to moving another woman into his home just weeks after his wife's death. When did she move into um, the house with you? Two or three days before Halloween of 2014. So the, the same month as the funeral for Christina Harris? Yeah. Harris then spoke on his wife's life insurance he received. So the checks that you received were altogether that it was about 150, that range? Roughly, yes. Okay. And you used that to pay off your student loans? Yes. How did you feel after your wife died? It's kind of a strange question, but uh, a little confused, very hurt. It was devastating. It was, it was rough. It was very sad. Focus is making sure that the girls never look at me and say, why didn't you do more? Christy's mother is breaking her silence and speaking out on how her daughter's murder was revealed in part by her daughter's breast milk. And now she's speaking out on her husband's murderous plot. That's right. Five years after Christy Thompson Harris's murder, her husband is accused of putting heroin on her cereal. Now, just a few hours ago, a petition was filed in court revealing some new information about the days leading up to Christy's murder and also some bombshell admissions from Jason's family. We bring in defender Karen Drew with the exclusive. Karen. Well, Devin and Kim, what many don't know is Christy's family had filed a wrongful death lawsuit. The family telling me the point of that lawsuit was to be able to depose certain people and obtain certain information under oath. Well, what's in the petition that was just filed today reveals some of what they found out about Christie's murder. Christy Thompson Harris was a mother of two daughters. She was just 36 years old when she was found dead in her home. Her death initially ruled an accidental overdose. Disbelief. She had no history of drugs. That's Kathy Mays, Christy's mom. Very tenacious. Christy's mom is breaking her silence and talking about her daughter's death and the fact that it's her son-in-law, Jason, who is charged with her murder. Were you aware of issues within the marriage? In conversations with her that there were things that were upsetting her. It was Christie's saved breast milk that would later be tested by investigators and show that the mother of two did not have heroin in her system. For years, the family kept quiet on their concerns as the police investigated. What was that like in terms of having that interaction with someone like that? He's the father, we have to respect him. Acting out on your feelings could put a barrier, so it was important to maintain respect. After three years of waiting and no charges, Christie's family filed a wrongful death lawsuit. My goal has always been for the girls, and my thinking was, if this is something, I don't want them to ask me why I didn't do more. This petition just filed reveals new information from people who were deposed. It reveals Jason having a romantic telephone relationship with another woman according to the petition. Harris told that other woman his divorce was finalized from Christie while Christie was still alive. 
The filing states, Jason told a neighbor Christy died as a result of eating drugs. That fact stated before the medical examiner had completed his report. The petition provides a chilling admission of Jason Harris's sister. When she spoke to Jason, he stated that he would have Christy killed and then outline a plan. Who killed Christy Thompson Harris? Mays knows that this road is long to get the answers from the court. My whole focus is making sure that the girls never look at me and say, why didn't you do more? So what's going on, everybody? Um, you hear this story is absolutely crazy, right? Let's say if the guy would have kept quiet, right? If he wouldn't have said nothing, um, if he would have just kept his mouth shut, he would have probably got away with it. The family knew something was wrong because they knew, you know, that the, um, the victim didn't use drugs, right? So her family knows, all right, something's not right here. Um, we don't see any signs of drug abuse. Right, we don't see any signs of usage, and then now she dies out of the blue from a heroin overdose, right? Then the life insurance. When you think about it, it sounds like you know one of those typical cases where the husband kills the wife for the insurance money. You know, and he only got $125,000. You know, he paid off his school loans, he, you know, paid off his debt, and that was it. So he threw his life away, took himself away from his children. He's going to end up spending the rest of his life in prison um, because 100% that's premeditated, right? And this is something that could happen to anybody. Anybody out there that has a history of addiction, this could easily happen to you. I think the execution, what he did was extremely intelligent, right? Um, he just lunched up and that's something that, excuse me, anybody that breaks any type of law or does crime, we leave clues. We leave way more clues than we know we leave, right? So we think we might have just dropped our keys or our phone at the scene, but we dropped our keys, our phone, the ring doorbell seen us, the lady that, that is nosy upstairs looking out the window seen us, um, you know, the ATM across the street seen our car, you know, you, you can't get away with that type of stuff now. And I, you know, the people I feel sad for are the children, two daughters, um, one of them probably isn't going to know her mom because she was young. She was bringing best friend, right? And you could tell what the mother said, um, the grandchild of the little kids. The mother said it was hard knowing that he did this, but we had to keep it cool with him, right? And you could see they had to keep it cool so that they could still see those kids. So they were probably being nice to him knowing this animal took our daughter away from us, murdered our daughter in cold blood. And we have to be nice to him or else we don't see our grandchildren, right? Think about how hard that would be. I think about how they sued him first for wrongful death, right? That's very easy to get. People sue for wrongful death all the time. As a matter of fact, they did it with OJ. Um, anybody, like a celebrity or somebody that has money, that they're involved in death, nine times out of 10, they're gonna be sued for wrongful death. So that's what they did. They got him a deposition is what takes place when you get sued so a deposition is you your lawyer and the other people's lawyer who is suing you and they're asking you questions those questions they're being asked under oath so you you know pretty much got to tell the truth um he could have just said i plead the fifth i plead the fifth i plead the fifth instead he got caught out there um admitting that he moved a woman in to that house uh you know less than a month later he moved the woman into his wife's house so that woman sleeping in the bed that his wife just slept in uh you know less than a month after the murder think about that um you know and then i also think about it as that's good that's what he gets you commit a crime like that you take your daughter's mother away from them that's what you deserve it was extremely selfish and um, all he thought about was himself, right? He could have divorced her, he could have left her, could have fought her in court for custody, um, but instead he decided to kill her. He will 100%, in my opinion, um, stay in jail for the rest of his life. So let me know what you guys thought of this video, if you liked it, if you enjoyed it, um, your opinion on what you, what you heard. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And if you guys know any other stories out there, that you would like me to do a video on, let me know. Drop it in the comments. I thank you guys. Remember to stay kind, loving, and patient. Have a great Christmas, y'all.